I was like, I want to get a couple scattered pieces, but I don't want anything to show. I didn't want to be judged. But once I got that first good one, I was like, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna do some damage, you know? I have around 340 hours worth of work from 17 artists so far. Once I have my mindset on a tattoo, I do whatever it takes to get it done. 15 years ago, you wouldn't find somebody at Louis Vuitton store or the Gucci store with a tattoo on his neck or a tattoo on his hand. But now, it's not a taboo anymore. That's almost like a requirement. We're in the renaissance of tattooing, so I think people saw that you can put paintings on skin. I didn't know this existed, and I want it. Once I got my first actual good tattoo, I just noticed that I started to think about them more and more. I would have dreams, you know, weekly about them, uh, positive dreams that just made me wake up feeling refreshed. I want people to do double takes for my clients. Get the people who are viewing the tattoos to say, what the fuck? I've been tattooing now for 10 years, and I still haven't done a single tattoo that I'm proud of. My philosophy is that everything is attached to everything. I think food is one of the most creative outlets there is in this world right now. I think the sole reason that I'm a successful tattoo artist is that I used to be a chef. Like you would see in my tattoos, high contrast, I do high contrast food. It, it gave me the mindset to do what I do now. I would have been nothing without being in the restaurant business before. In the Scandinavian culture we have something called love yandi. You are not allowed to think you're something special. Success is not really honored like the American dream is. For me, the uh, United States was a place where I can learn, where I can grow, and I push myself to try to be at the highest level. I was comfortable in Peru. I had two shops at the moment. I was the best in my country, but that's not the world. That's not enough for me. From being the head of a mouse, I came being the tail of a lion, wanting to be the head. The camera is, is a big part of me. It distracts me a little bit, but uh, if I want to be distracted, then I go out with my Nissan or my dirt bike. The speed, the adrenaline, it helps me to focus on myself instead of work. I cannot invent the, the wheel again, but uh, you can always invent the story. And uh, then you can make the tattoo come even more alive. How do you do it today? How do you invent a style? I don't know. There is no plan from the beginning, uh, and it turns out to whatever it turns out to. Uh, I just love that it's, it's so complex. It was hard for me to be recognized as a serious tattooer. I had to work harder when I was getting into it for people to be able to see my work rather than, you know, who I was. And then I realized that I've had all this training as a fine artist and I don't see so much of that in the tattoo world. I wonder if I could bring something different to the table. Growing up on the west side of Chicago wasn't a very easy upbringing. There were about 11 of us in the house and it was difficult. Things are going around you, it's very busy. I didn't really have much space to call my own. And so one of the things that worked for me was, you know, escaping into my art. 
This piece of paper was mine to control. It was mine to make more than what it was. And I kind of just fell in love with the process of making art that way. You have this ability to depict the reality that we live in. You know, you have these dark moments. And tattooing is a perfect way to depict that triumph over the darkness. It would be unimaginable five years ago, but they're real. We have people now which are being recognized as legends. They will, in time, be referenced to like Leonardo da Vinci or Michelangelo. That moment where your mind switches and comes into another state and you start seeing it in a new life, there's no way back.